<coughs> Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, the, uh, the title of this lecture is Speed of Light, but actually the light would be subject of one of the very last couple of statements in this lecture. Um, this lecture is part of the course called uh, Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. I do suggest you to watch this lecture and all other lectures of this course from the website rather than from, let's say, directly from YouTube or somewhere else. Because the website is basically, uh, it, it's, a, it's a driver. I mean, it has a menu, it, it has chapters, if you wish, parts, chapters, whatever. Now, this lecture is part of the chapter called uh, Field Waves. And it's important uh, to understand all the material presented in this chapter. So if you go to unizor.com to Physics for Teens course, um, it will be um, the uh, part of the course which is called Waves. And within that uh, part there is a chapter Field Waves. So every single all lectures, there are lectures about gradients, diversions, curls, the uh, Maxwell equations. I mean, all this information is really necessary. You have to know all this stuff before approaching this particular lecture. So it's all um, in, in, in the menu in the logical order. So any uh, subsequent lecture is using the material from the previous, etc. Okay, so that's a preamble. And obviously, you do need to know math. In particular, um, partial derivatives, which is which are used in, in uh, the whole basically chapter um, dedicated to field waves. Uh, you need to know vector algebra. I mean, it's all part of the physics which um, which physics cannot live without contemporary physics. Well, actually, not contemporary only, not only contemporary. Whatever I'm talking about today, and whatever I was talking about in all the lectures which belong to the field. Um, waves. It's as it was at the end of 19th century. Um, the development of the 20th century, which are related to theory of relativities and quantum physics, etc., not yet happened. So James Maxwell, who basically was the author of so-called Maxwell equations described in the previous lectures, four of them, um, he was basically a very knowledgeable guy. He knew the, the, the physics uh, as it was at the time, knew the results of experiments, um, and knew his uh, math, by the way. Um, especially, again, vectors, um, derivatives, calculus, basically derivatives, uh, partial derivatives, integration, etc. So, right now, we are not really moving beyond the end of 19th century, believe it or not. Okay, so, um, the previous lectures were dedicated to four Maxwell equations which describe electromagnetic field. So we are talking only about electromagnetic field. Now, in this lecture we will talk about a very, very simple uh, electromagnetic field. Not anything like in general. No, very, very simple. Um, now, the very simple uh, electromagnetic field has very simple both components, electrical components and magnetic components. So electrical components, electric intensity E, it's a vector, and we will assume that this vector basically is changing in one particular direction along the x-axis. Now, the magnetic field intensity, magnetic component of the electromagnetic field um, intensity, that's vector B, and that will be always perpendicular to the electric uh, intensity. So, if you remember, if we are changing the electric ve uh, ve vector, electric intensity vector um, value, the changing electricity produces changing magnetic field. Changing magnetic field produces changing electric field. So I assume that this is a simple, uh, uh, and it's changing along the x-axis, up and down, or whatever, changing. What's important is changing. And then the B vector would be um, perpendicular to it, 
always. And the direction of the um, propagation of this electromagnetic oscillations is always perpendicular to both. And I assume the direction would be along the z-axis. So <coughs> I would draw it in this particular way. So that would be my, let's say this would be my x-axis, that would be my y, and this would be my z, propagation of waves. So x is e, so e is I assume this is something like a sinusoidal, but it doesn't really matter. What matter is, it only changes the x component. Y and z component are not changing of this field. Now, the perpendicular to it would be, uh, how should I explain it? Something like this. And the, uh, no, I think, I, uh, yeah, well, something like this. Yes, yeah, so this is along the x, and this is along the y. Well. I have a much better picture in the notes for this lecture. So I do suggest when you will go and you will um, um, open the, uh, the right side of the screen in the uh, Unisor website has notes and there is a nice, nice and pretty picture of this. And uh, so the propagation of the waves would be in this particular direction. Uh, I think I probably do it slightly different. I think I should do it something like this like this. Yeah, so this is B and this is E vector. E goes up and down, B goes along the y-axis, and the whole thing is propagating in this particular direction. So the changing electric field produces changing magnetic, magnetic produces changing electric, etc., etc., and that's how it's propagating. Now, um, so this is how electromagnetic oscillations are actually going. Okay, now let's talk about Maxwell equations and mathematics of this. Now, if vector E is, has only x component, I can write it as x component. Now, what it depends on? It changing as we move along the z-axis and at any particular point it's changing with time. So basically it, it's a function of two arguments. Time and z components, how far our electromagnetic field propagated. Now, two other components are zero. There is no component which is changing along the y direction or along the z component. So it, it's not changing this way and it's not changing this way. It's changing only this way. Now, speaking about B, now I'm talking it's only changing along the y axis. You see, this is the B component, so it's changing up and down within the y axis. And um, Obviously, it depends, again, on uh, time and uh, how far our um, field propagated. But its x component is 0, its y component is by of t and z, and the z component is also 0. So, now, the four um, uh, equations uh, which we have learned about before, four Maxwell equations, um, contain a lot of variables, basically, right? I mean, it contains two vectors, E and B, and it contains all components of each of them. Each of them has three components, so it's basically like six unknown variables. Now, in our case, we have only two variables, because we have simplified the complexity of the um, electromagnetic field, which can be produced by many different sources of moving electrons somewhere. Like, take a sun, for example. Sun has a, a huge number of sources of 
electric oscillations, which produce magnetic oscillations, which is electromagnetic field. And obviously it goes to all different directions, and it's a combination, it's a superposition of many, many different fields. Now we're talking about one simplest um, uh, electromagnetic field, which has only one component along the X, which is uh, electricity, and only one component along the... So now we have two functions, basically, of two arguments, and uh, we have four uh, uh, Maxwell equations, which mix them together. E depends on B, B depends on, uh, on E, etc. Now, we would like to solve it somehow. We are not going to solve it in a general case. Number one, only in this case, and even in this case, we will restrict ourselves to one particular solution, which will be proven as a solution to the Maxwell equations. So, you remember that if you have a system of equations, how can you basically solve it? Well, you have to reduce the number of equations and number of arguments, right? So, that's exactly what I will do. I will try to reduce system of whatever number of um, variables with whatever number of equations with single equations, and each equation will, will contain only one particular unknown. And if I will be able to solve this equation for this particular unknown, that would be basically a solution. So I need an equation for E and an equation for B separately, not together as they are in the Maxwell equation. So I will, would, would, would like to do this mathematics. It's not a trick, actually, but it's, it's some um, calculations are, are involved. So just follow me. So first of all, what we will do, we will recall the third Maxwell equation, which is nabla E is equal to minus dB or dt. Okay, so if you don't remember this Maxwell equation, please go to the earlier lecture in the same um, chapter which I have. It's called third Maxwell equation, where this is basically explained. Well, I do suggest you, again, to know very well the whole chapter, which is called field waves, with all these nabla, gradient, uh, curl, diversion, etc., etc. So this is all must, otherwise you will not understand it. But if you do know that, this is the simple stuff, really. So just do it slowly, um, uh, thoroughly, and try to go through all field waves lectures um, so that you understand all the material. Our purpose is not really to like force this knowledge upon you. I would like you to understand how it's not really very complicated if you go with methodically and step by step. So don't jump. This is the third equation. I will take it as granted because it's already been discussed. Now, I will apply this to my concrete vectors. But I would like to really open this up. Nabla vector, pro uh, vector product with a vector. Let me just remind you what is a vector product of operator Nabla. Nabla is basically a pseudo vector. It's d by dx, d by dy, d by dz. I, it's three operators of differentiating by partial differentiating by x, by y, and by z, combined into a pseudo vector. And, and multiplication in this particular case, it's a vector product, it's a cross product. I can really um, component by component actually convert it into something which is like normal operator and normal um, algebraic operations. And here is how. If you have, uh, let me just put it somewhere here. If you have a vector, uh, you know what, just for savings of real estate, I will put it this way, by 0. And here I will put my general uh, nabla some vector v, which has three components, vx, vy, and vz. Um, in general, this is the following. Uh, 
it's d uh, v z component by y um, minus d v y component by d z and this is my uh, component along the x-axis plus component of the y-axis would be uh, dx for dz d v x by d z minus d v z by d x j this is my i, j, and k are unit vectors along the x, y, and z axis. Axis and uh, v, x, v, y, and v, z are components of my vector v. And the third component would be um, d, y, d, v, y by d, x minus d, v, x by d, y. Okay. Now, is, if this looks like, like Chinese for you or something like that, again, go back to one of the previous lectures where it's all explained in the detail. So I'm just taking this as granted. Okay. So this is general for vector V having the X, the Y, and the Z components. And the vector a actually V is... In this particular case, it's a general vector which depends on t, x, y, and z. It's a vector field, which means for each space coordinates it has a value, and it's changing in time. So that's what vector field actually is, a changing in time vector field. Okay. Now, I will use this big formula for our E and our um, B. Now, EX is the only non-zero component of the vector E. So if I need uh, to multiply um, pseudo vector nabla by vector E, I have to really use this formula, but have in mind that VY and VZ are equal to zero in this case. EX is the only thing which is not equal to zero. So basically I have this thing where Vx is actually <coughs> is actually participating and this one. So if E is substituted is in, instead of V here, then this, 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 this components are zero. Now this component still has um, the uh, X component, right? Vx. But it's partially differentiating by, by, by y, but we know that ex doesn't really depend on y, it depends only on t and z, time and the direction of um, propagation of the electromagnetic oscillations. Um, the vector e does not change along the y-axis. So this is also is equal to zero. So the only thing which I have is this one. So this thing so this thing on the left is equal to very simple this d e x component of t z by d z that's what nabla times e in this simple case and it's equal to minus d again. Now, v is the vector which has only y component. So, uh, yeah, I forgot to put j here. This is my unit vector along the y-axis, right? Now, in case of db by dt, b also has only one component, and it happened to be the component along the y-axis. So, I can 
uh, convert this into dBy of gz by dt along the same y component. So this is a vector, but since the vector has only one coordinate not equal to zero, which is y coordinate, then the um, uh, okay, here it is. B is equal to bx times i plus b y times j plus b z times k, right? That's how my vector is represented along the coordinates. These are unit vectors, and bx, by and bz are components, x, y, and z components of the vector. But this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero, right? So I have to differentiate. When I differentiate it by time, I differentiate only this by time. Now this is a constant vector, and this is the constant which is changing, right? So that's why I put this. Constant goes outside of the differentiation. Again, it's all simple if you know the basic manipulations with vectors and uh, derivatives. Now, I have a very simple equation, because right now what I can do, I can just do this. Now it's not a vector, it's a scalar um, equation. Well, it's relatively simple. Fine, that's one equation. Now let's consider the second equation. Um, the fourth. The fourth Maxwell equation says the following. Um, you know what, I will write this equation here again for the sake of real estate. So I have dEx of Tz by dz equals minus dBy of Tz by dt. And I will have this on 3. Okay, now I will consider the fourth Maxwell equation, which says the following. Again, nabla times b vector uh, is equal to mu epsilon d e by d t plus mu sigma t. Okay, it's a little bit more difficult a little bit more complex than the previous one. And here is the reason for complexity. Um, first of all, there are two different um, uh, multipliers. These are constants, actually. Mu is magnetic um, permeability of the media where electromagnetic field is propagating. Epsilon is electric permittivity of this media. Now, it's different, it's constants for every part of media, for vacuum, for glass, for metal. We have so, some constants which have been measured and known. These are constants. Now, uh, mu is the same as this one, magnetic. Sigma is conductivity of the medium. So, it's basically in reverse of the resistivity. So, we all know about the resistance, but this is inverse conductivity. Uh, again, this was explained in, in details. Um, and this particular member, it was added by Maxwell on the top of whatever. This is part of the um, uh, Ampere's law, but Maxwell had to add this component to make the whole thing um, uh, play together in these four uh, Maxwell equations. Now. But we are talking about the medium, we are talking about vacuum. Again, we are simplifying. We are not talking about um, uh, propagation of uh, electromagnetic field in, uh, in metals or somewhere else. We are talking about vacuum. We are simplifying the story. Because, again, my purpose is for you to understand the mechanics, the basic mechanics of this. Obviously, we can make it more complicated, but this would be more, I would say, quantitative complication rather than qualitative. So let's just simplify again our picture. And this is vacuum. Vacuum has no electrical conductivity, so this goes down. There is no such 
member in our case. Since we are talking about vacuum, and vacuum has special, I will put zero here. These are known constants of magnetic uh, permeability and electric permittivity of vacuum. And then it looks more or less like this one, right? Okay. Now I will do exactly the same. I will simplify this. I will convert this into something similar to this. How should I do it? Again, nabla times vector b. Vector b has only y component. So in this general ex description of nabla times vector v, I should use only the y component. So this component stays, right? So I will have minus d b y of t z by d z minus that stays times i uh, whereas y okay here is again but now here similar to the previous case my b y component it does not depend on x, it depends only on time and the space coordinate z. So this is also equal to zero. So there is nothing else. So on the left, I have only this component. And on the right, I have equals mu, zero, epsilon, zero. Now, d, e, put dt. Same thing as before, since e has only one non-zero coordinate along the x axis, I can put very similar to the previous case g e x of t z by dt times unit vector along the x axis. Same thing, because e is equal to e x times i vector plus e y times j plus uh, e z times k, but these are equal to zero, so I have only one e x times i and differentiating would give me this. Now, now let me wipe out this. I don't need my original Maxwell equations. Let me wipe out i and i. And I have only these two kind of look-alike equations. Now, what's the problem? Because it's a system of two equations with two unknown functions. By the way, it's not unknown variables, it's unknown functions, because ex and by are both unknown functions of two arguments, t and z. And it's a system, and these functions are mixed together. So I would like to do, I would like to separate them into separate equations somehow. Well, let's just talk about E components, the electrical components. Well, how can I do that? Well, actually, it's very simple. I will differentiate this by z and this um, by z. So what happens? And this by by t. Yeah, this by d by by, by this by z d for dz and this d by dt. Let's see what happens. Let's talk about this particular component and this particular component. If I will differentiate this by z, I will have minus d b y of t z by dt, dz, and I have put 2. Right? It's a second derivative, partial derivative. The first derivative was by dt, and now I uh, have a second derivative by dz. So that would be it. What will be here? First was dz, uh, again minus, db of tz by dz, and the second one by dt dt. And again, from the theory of partial differential equations, we know that the order of differentiation for most 
smooth functions is not important. As long as they're differentiable, the order of differentiation, dz by dt, or dt by d, d, and then by dt, is the same. So these are equal, which means that this will be equal to this one. And that will be my equation, which contains only uh, e. So this would be d2 ex of tz by dz and dz, so it's dz square. That would be on the left, and on the right would be mu 0 epsilon 0, again d2 ex of tz by dt and dt, so it's dt square. Second derivative. And this is the equation which I am looking for. It contains only one function. It's a differential equation with one function. And don't forget that all of this was done at the end of 19th century by, in this case, by James Maxwell. So, this is equation which describes the function, only one function, of two arguments, time and position. Um, and I can basically solve it. Now, I'm not going to solve it in general. However, I would like to point out that this equation, which is basic, by, by the way called wave equation, um, it describes many different sinusoidal like oscillations and here I would like to remind you um, a particular um, sinusoidal oscillation which we were already considering before oscillation of the rope whenever you are moving it up and down at one end and the waves are going all the way it was all described in the same by the way chapter um, field, uh, uh, not field, uh, the, the oscillations of waves, yes, I in the same chapter waves, and um, if you will take a look at this, you will find the following solution I came up with. It's A times sine of omega times T minus z over b. Okay. Now, z is a space coordinate whenever we are um, um, make this wave oscillations um, along the z-axis. t is time. v is the speed of propagation. Now, if you will take a look at this, if you have z, if, if the source of oscillations is at z is equal to zero, Okay, this is my z-axis. If this is the source of oscillation and I'm moving the rope up and down, okay, so z divided by v is basically a time delay. How much time is needed for a wave to reach the point z if the speed of um, propagation is v? So, um, if there is no such thing, it describes that z is equal to zero, right? And this is a simple sign. This is amplitude, and this is the frequency, basically. This is the position, uh, the height, if you wish, of moving my end um, at point z is equal to zero. And it's basically the same, but with a time delay, and that's why I have introduced this. So the deriva derivation of this formula is really trivial and again it's one of the previous lectures so I will use it and I will check if this is a solution so instead of solving this equation I will just check if simple oscillations as we already kind of researched would be a solution obviously the real course of physics in universities etc will contain a general solution etc etc that's not the purpose. My purpose is to prepare you for understanding of that more, more complex things. 
and why I'm doing this uh, uh, exactly for this simple case. So instead of solving this differential equation, I'll just check that something which seems to be most natural is indeed a solution. Let's try it. So I need two uh, derivatives by z and two derivatives by t. Okay, by z. First derivative, d per dz. Okay, let's call it e of tz because I'm going to use it for this e. So e of tz is equal to the first derivative. So a goes as it is, sine goes into cosine of omega p minus z over v times um, derivative of the inner function. We are doing it by z. So it's um, minus omega over v. Omega over v, right? That's inner function. Omega t would not be dependent on z, and omega z over v would give me this. Okay, the second derivative, d2 e or tz by dz squared is equal to. Okay, um, it would be again a. It would be minus sine of omega t minus z over v. Uh, times inner function at minus uh, omega over v and this omega over v. So, plus and minus, minus so will be square. Omega square over v square. Right? And minus we will put in front. So A is amplitude, omega is uh, frequency, V is <coughs> speed. So that's this part. Okay, now let's talk about this part, second derivative by, uh, by this. Okay, so the first derivative, d e of t z by dt. <coughs> a cosine of omega t minus z over v times in the uh, derivative of inner function which is just omega. The second derivative would be d2e of tz dt square equals okay cosine would be minus so it's minus here a sine of omega t minus z over v omega and one more omega omega square and this is supposed to be equal to this times mu zero epsilon zero mu zero epsilon zero so this is equal to this is it possible of course it is possible the only thing we need is that this so if 1 over v square is equal to mu 0 epsilon 0, my equation would be satisfied. So we know mu 0 and epsilon 0. And James Maxwell knew it at the time. So he can always calculate what is v. v is equal 1 over square root of mu 0 epsilon zero, right, from here. So, he did this calculation. And what did he receive? <coughs> he received that this speed is about 300,000 uh, million, billion meters per second, approximately. The exact number is in my notes. It's 299, blah, blah, blah. 
And, lo and behold, this is exactly the same speed which was measured when uh, uh, physicists were measuring speed of, uh, speed of light. And that was a kind of a wow <laughs> moment for James Maxwell. At this moment, he suggested that maybe the light is electromagnetic oscillations. And that was his, I would say, extremely useful um, guess and suggestion, because it was obviously true. It was uh, n numerous number of times it was uh, uh, supported by experiments, etc. So that is the result of all these calculations, and that's why I called this lecture speed of light, because this is exactly how speed of light was found theoretically, and it was, well, speed of electromagnetic oscillations was found theoretically, and it was absolutely the same, I mean, to, to their level, 19th century level of precision, it was the same as the speed of light which they have measured independently. And that was basically the most important um, kind of result of this. They understood the nature of the light. And that's the end of this lecture. And I think it's the end of this chapter of this course of physics. This is what I wanted to end up this field waves with. Again, there are other solutions to these differential equations. But what's important is that the most simple one really is um, uh, part of the solution. And uh, I do recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. And there is a nice pretty picture, actually, how these waves are propagating in space. And don't forget that this is the simplest way of um, simplest kind of electromagnetic field. Obviously, the, the real theory is much more complicated, but I just wanted to prepare you for something which you might or might not learn in, in universities. At least you know that this is, well, it's not a proof, but it's a very, very solid assumption that the light is the oscillations of electromagnetic field. With this, thank you very much, and good luck.